Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 14th of September 2011. We have a comet crashing into the Sun, but before we get to that, our trivia question. 52 years ago this day, the first man-made object reached the Moon, actually hit the Moon. What was the name of that object and who launched it? The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday we've had seven sea flares, the largest of which was a C3 event from region 1289. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's going on. We have eight officially numbered regions on the disk and three as yet unnumbered regions. So let's take a look at region 1287 in the southwest first. This region is growing very rapidly according to the area estimates but unfortunately it's going over the west limb fairly quickly and will probably be all but gone tomorrow. Region 1289 has now moved into the northwest quadrant and according to the NOAA estimates is growing in area. When you compare today's picture with yesterday's you see it's sort of a mixed bag. The main spot certainly has elongated and grown. However, several of the trailer spots have disappeared. You can also see region 1293 to the south and west. That region seems to have grown. However, NOAA has claimed that it's dropped in area by over 50%. That I don't quite understand. When we come to region 1290, I have another disagreement with NOAA. It claims that it has stayed about constant in area, but when I compare the spots, particularly in the trailer region, they seem to have shrunk quite considerably. However, there is an unnumbered region to the south and west of region 1290. It has some moderate sized spots and this could develop into a major region if this current growth rate continues. Region 1292 is in the northeast. According to NOAA's figures, this region has grown by over 50% overnight. However, when I compare yesterday's image to today's, I see that the leading spot is about the same as it was yesterday and many of the trading spots seem to have disappeared. So I would say this was a candidate for a region that is decaying. And we have the reverse situation in region 1294, which Noah claims is decaying. However, when I look at the pictures, I see that the trading spot has grown quite large and the leading spots have developed quite significantly too. So this is a region that is growing. I'm beginning to get confused. Last but not least, let's take a look at regions 1295 and the newly numbered region 1296. Both of them are near the northeast limb. These are quite substantial regions and should be a source of future activity. However, I think there are three regions here, not two. And if you look at the magnetogram, you can see three distinct areas. And the third region, which is admittedly smaller, is certainly larger than some of the currently numbered regions. As I mentioned before, we have three unnumbered regions. We've talked about the one that's near region 1290 and the one that's re near region 1295. There is a small one out ahead of region 1289, but it's just a single pore. Overall, solar activity has been relatively low, but with all these regions and the possibility of them interacting with one another, I expect solar activity to pick up. So let's see if we can follow the comings and goings of all of these sunspots by first looking at the white light sunspot movie, and then secondly the magnetic movie. Here again, to follow all of the different regions, you may want to run through it several times, and also in full screen mode. My favourite area of interest is the re new region that's emerging ahead of region 1290, which you will see towards the end of the sequence. I did manage to capture a couple of useful frames from the little bit of data that was available from the AIA instrument. In this first frame you can see a beautiful jet off of the northwest limb. In the second frame there's a huge prominence on the northeast limb, which looks as though it's about ripe to lift off. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument, I'd like you to take a look at the north limb where you can see the uh, northern polar coronal hole. At this time of year you get the best view of the northern polar coronal hole because the sun's tilt angle is at its maximum. The northern polar coronal hole is important because until that disappears and reverses we have not reached solar maximum. From the SOHO coronagraph data we can see that we're still getting some fairly substantial coronal mass ejections particularly off the northwest limb. Also in the C3 instrument we can see a comet heading straight for the Sun. I've decided not to include any more details about that here, but I'll make a special video of that later today and post that on YouTube. The solar wind data from ACE show us that the effect of that coronal hole is passing as the high speed stream from it is uh, moving past the Earth. The temperatures remained constant, maybe dropped a little bit. The, de the uh, velocity has dropped quite significantly, and the density is sort of around about one proton per cubic centimeter the high energy electron flux has returned to normal levels and it seems to be varying far less than it has been for the last couple of days. And we have no proton events underway at the moment. 
From the NOAA 15 data, we see that the uh, auroral zone is quite agitated still, yet the KP index is returning to more quiet levels steadily. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B7 level, the sunspot number is at 118, the radio sun intensity is at 124 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped to 520 km per second with a density of approximately 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are once again quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is C flares are likely, it's possible that we'll get an M flare, but I think it's highly unlikely we'll get an X flare. Sunspot number will remain high, coronal mass ejections remain likely, solar wind speed will go lower, and a major geomagnetic storm is unlikely. From the composite coronal image, we can see that there are no major regions due back for at least three or four days. If you wish to find out more about what's happening on the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you'd like to see some earlier editions of the Sun Today or some of my other videos, then go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to keep abreast of what's going on on the Sun, then uh, you're more than welcome to subscribe. The answer to today's trivia question was Luna 2, which was launched by the USSR. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.